I'm Dustin Childs, Head of Threat Awareness here at Trend Micro Zero Day Initiative. With me today is Bobby Gould, the ZDI analyst. Bobby, how are you doing? Doing great. Having a great week. Yeah, so we are here at the end of day three of Pwn to Own Ireland 2025. How are you feeling? Fantastic. Ha you, you're fantastic? I'm happy exhausted. To, <laughs> I don't know how you can feel happy fantastic. Happy to have made it through. Happy to have made it through. That I understand. Because it has been an amazing week of research. In fact, I'm just gonna get to the big number before we get to anything else. Our total spend, our total, what we have given to these researchers that they have earned, $1,024,750. Does that sound like a lot? That is a lot. How many bugs is that? 73 unique zero days. Can you believe that? 73 unique zero days. And that's in course with a bunch of collisions and a couple failures thrown in too. That do, is amazing, amazing have, research. Do you have a highlight maybe of, of, of the research that you've done? <laughs> Solo smash up. So we started day one with the Soho Smash Up and it was really amazing. Soho Smash Up, you have to start from the exterior of the router, hit the WAN interface, pivot to the LAN interface, and then hit something else beyond that. The Team DDoS, they combined eight separate bugs to do that. That was pretty crazy, right? Yeah, the, the long bug chains are always amazing, chaining all the, all the different vulnerabilities together and uh, really having a high impact there. Yeah, and that was $100,000 right off the gate. The only problem was it was like so much work for them that when they came to their second attempt, <laughs> they're like, oh, by the way, we ran out of time to write our second attempt on the Phillips Hue Bridge and had to withdraw that entry. It's amazing how much work goes in behind the scenes and then you know you see it in the minute or whatever that it takes to do that exploit, but uh, I think that really highlights just how much work they were doing you know, in the months leading up to this. Yeah, and you were doing a lot of work uh, personally with Home Assistant Green, which I still say is not green. Yeah, so we saw uh, a ton of bugs in that product. It was really cool to see all the different researchers, you know, kind of following similar paths, but taking you know different detours here and there and exploiting it in different ways. And yeah, we expected a, a ton of collisions, but there really were a lot of unique bugs still, right? Yes, yes. Very cool to see all the unique research done on that product. Speaking of unique research and a whole lot of things, Canon printers. My goodness, we had like eight or nine rounds of those, and they were all successful. Correct. Yeah, so the, the printers are always fun to see, and uh, especially the, uh, you know, when they exploit it and play music. Put something on the screen. The Lexmark, yeah. I think we had Doom on. Uh, oh, the that's right, there. there was Lexmark on day three, where someone actually put Doom on the LCD. Sadly, we couldn't play it. You would have to like <laughs> scan something to turn left and then print something else to turn right and you know, that sort of thing. Definitely so, be difficult to dif Difficult play to play, but yeah, still impressive to see. And speaking of impressive, we saw two successful exploits of the Samsung Galaxy S25, right? Yeah! So starting with Ken on day two, uh, he combined five different bugs. The first thing he did was tell a joke. And, and I love the jokes, so I'll, I'll retell the joke here. Why did the scientist put a cap on his bleach? Why? Why? He wanted to cover his bases. <laughs> <laughs> that was the joke he told. Then he exfiltrated a picture from the target phone to his laptop. That was surprising and startling. Thankfully, the picture was safe for work. And then he took over the phone completely, pretty much having a root shell on it. And that was pretty amazing. That is, that's awesome to see. And then uh, today on day three, the folks from Interrupt Labs also took over a phone. In this case, they had one click and they were able to turn on the phone's location services as well as the camera. Is that bad, Bobby? I would say it's pretty bad. <laughs> is it bad to, to have a phone just automatically location services and, and camera going back to you? Yes, I would, I would not personally want that to happen to my phone, so I would, uh, okay. I'm glad that we're getting that fixed. I'm glad you have, you're here for that expert opinion. That, <laughs> yes, that, that is a bad thing. Yes. Uh, yeah, so both of those were worth $50,000 and uh, were really fascinating research to see, especially because we know a lot of people have those phones, so it's really impactful. Yeah. Uh, let's see, any other highlights that come to mind for you? 
I mean, it's been a great week in, in addition to all the exploits and stuff, uh, just getting to spend time with the researchers and the happy hours you've been doing here on site and stuff. It's been really cool to see uh, all the teams interacting and kind of sharing knowledge and research and, uh, you know, had some great conversations along the way with, with some very smart folks. So it's been cool to be here this week. Ladies and gentlemen, I want you to put it, your hands together and then back apart and back together again because it makes this really cool place of appreciation and give it up. To the left, to the right, to the front, to the side. Work, 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 work. Yeah, it really has been a fantastic week. Uh, if you've never been to Cork, Ireland, it's a wonderful place to be. So we want to thank the uh, office staff here at Trend Micro for hosting us. I know they put up with a lot to uh, deal with us. Of course, we want to thank the competitors for being here. We can't do this without people showing up and trusting us with their research. But we also want to thank the vendors, especially the vendors who are here on site. Our partner, Meta, they have been uh, essential in helping us with a lot of things. And our co-sponsors, Synology and QNAP, They've been fantastic to have around, but that pretty much wraps it up. So next up, we go to Tokyo, believe it or not. In January, we will be at Automotive World for Pono and Automotive. Uh, anything that you're looking forward to there besides the sushi? <laughs> the ramen. The ramen. <laughs> and a lot of great bugs. <laughs> a lot of great bugs. That's right. We are including level three EV chargers this year, as well as some stuff that's on the open protocol scene. So definitely check that out and stay with us. It'll be January 21st in Tokyo at Big Sites at Automotive World. So until then, this is Dustin Childs saying thank you for joining us and we'll see you in Tokyo.